Good morning. On behalf of Microsoft, we are just profoundly grateful for the work that Tracy, her entire team have done, and of course the work of all the sponsors and speakers to make this an amazing event this week. But mostly we want to thank all of you for your interest and support in Microsoft Technologies. We definitely don't take that for granted, and we're really excited to share with you our latest roadmap here this morning. I did want to give some perspective because we are moving faster than ever before at Microsoft to deliver new value to you. And at times it can be very overwhelming. We hear that from you. And so we try to step back about twice a year to share our roadmap across our products so that you understand the strategy, the big picture, and you can plan for it in your organizations. In the spring, we host a SharePoint webcast. This year we did it live from Las Vegas in the SharePoint conference, which we brought back, and we'll have another event next year. And in the fall, we get together with the rest of Microsoft for our big global conference called Microsoft Ignite. At Ignite, you may have seen that we did 10 blog posts in 70 sessions covering all the news on OneDrive and SharePoint and the connections to Office 365 and Azure. And we are very excited, uh, again, to bring this all the innovation from Ignite to Europe, to the European SharePoint Conference. And as Tracy said, we are just humbled that in the year that's been the biggest year in growth and innovation in SharePoint history, uh, that you've made this the biggest SharePoint community event in Europe and the biggest ESPC yet. And I'm so excited we brought the biggest contingent from Microsoft ever to ESPC. Uh, so of the speakers she uh, mentioned, there's 35 that are coming from the Redmond development teams. And they're very excited, we're very excited uh, to learn from each other this week. Not just share our roadmap, but hear from you, your best practices and the things that you want to see in the products going forward. I think, as Tracy said, one of the great things about an event like this is not just learning the latest technologies, but getting together as a community, sharing best practices, learning from each other. And SharePoint is the best community in technology. We get together in our big global events, our SharePoint conference and Ignite, great regional events like European SharePoint conference, Oop, I clicked too fast through that, and the local SharePoint Saturday events, so global, regional, and local. And I really want to take a moment to celebrate those local SharePoint Saturdays. For me, this is an indicator of how uh, we're doing in the community's interest on that. Uh, there's over 85 SharePoint Saturdays around the world. There's been 22 just in October and November. Uh, this past weekend was Toronto, Casablanca, and Oslo, Norway. And on this slide, you see the number of first-time SharePoint Saturdays where people are coming to learn not just about SharePoint, but as we're doing in this event, sharing all the connections across Microsoft 365 and Azure. So a special thanks to the community leaders who run these free local events. And I'd strongly encourage all of you to attend the one near you. And if there isn't one, to get together with your colleagues and start one. We really appreciate these, uh, these local communities. And one of the biggest things we hear at these events, big ones, local ones, is that the most important thing is hearing about the best practices with the latest technologies from other organizations that are similar to yours. And so we're very excited to see, as the agenda came together for this event, a number of leading edge customers and partners of ours uh, who are delivering great talks this week on how they're using the Microsoft 365 and Azure technologies in their organizations. I definitely encourage you to attend a number of these. We've been gratified, of course, to see a Danish company, Lego, doing great work with OneDrive and Power Apps and Office 365, and uh, of course, the other customers shown here. So special thanks to the customers for participating in events like this. And so next, let me transition to how we're thinking about SharePoint. Uh, you know, people remind me that uh, 10 years ago, SharePoint was IaaS and PaaS and SaaS all rolled up into one into an on-premises server. And now that we're uh, predominantly in the cloud, the Microsoft product line has broadened considerably in Office 365 and Azure. And so we want to be clear on SharePoint's role in all that. And basically, our framing is that 
A digital transformation is key to the success of every organization, small, medium, large, education, government, corporate. Every organization's got to transform to respond uh, more quickly to their customers in the market. And the number one ingredient in that digital transformation is a modern workplace, one where you can attract and engage and empower employees to do a better job for your organization, for its stakeholders, uh, and bring uh, their best effort and passion in every day. And what SharePoint does is provide a foundational set of services that powers lots of experiences that are essential for the modern workplace. And so how we talk about SharePoint in the broader Microsoft portfolio is content collaboration for the modern workplace. And let me recap some of those experiences that SharePoint powers, because there's a broad spectrum. We power anywhere access to all your files, personal and team, through OneDrive. We'll be showing that this morning. We support hundreds of different content types, first party and third party, in SharePoint and OneDrive, but we've done extra work in the office experience to support real-time collaboration, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, on all the operating systems powered by these rich content collaboration experiences in SharePoint. We're part of a comprehensive and flexible teamwork solution where you're using the content services with SharePoint combined with the communication services of Outlook and Microsoft Teams. We're helping build engaging, modern employee intranets using SharePoint as a publishing solution, integrating Yammer for social and Microsoft Stream for video. And then lastly, we're powering a spectrum of business applications with SharePoint connected to Power Apps and Flow, and lots of great partner BPM and workflow solutions, many of which are being shown by partners here this week. And so that's the spectrum of experiences we power in the modern workplace. SharePoint's, of course, built on the Microsoft Cloud, the Azure security model, so you can secure these applications in a consistent way, an increasing set of AI services we'll talk about this morning for enriching those experiences, and a common extensibility model. And this is one of my favorite parts of SharePoint, but also one of the most complicated parts to talk about because SharePoint is both an end user application that works out of the box, but is also an extensible platform that you can adapt to meet the needs of your organization. And so I'm really excited we did a blog post in just the last day around how the new SharePoint framework is the fastest growing extensibility mechanism in Microsoft 365 and is the way we're powering custom solutions across the suite. And you'll see Vesa and team in the keynote after me talking about extensibility. All right, let's move on to going into these scenarios in more depth, sharing some news and demos. Uh, we're going to organize around four sections. They're going to consist of engaging intranets, flexible teamwork, file collaboration, and lastly, how artificial intelligence is infusing all those experiences. The first one of these experiences is the notion of an engaging employee intranet. Uh, we've come a dramatic uh, way in the last three years since we introduced a new roadmap for the experience of SharePoint, the future of SharePoint event in May. And we've just got a ton of new stuff here that we'd love to show off to you. And so with that, let me introduce our first demoer, Dan Holm, who's going to show some of the work we're doing on engaging employee experiences with SharePoint, Yammer, Stream, and more. Dan. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, everybody. It's great to be back at the European SharePoint conference. Uh, and in a modern workplace, you have to have a way to inform and engage employees. And there's no better way than with a modern intranet built with Microsoft 365. So we're going to take a look at how you can use SharePoint along with Yammer and Stream to create incredible engaging experiences that keep people up to date and engaged in what's going on in the organization. Let's start with SharePoint News and the investments we've made to let you get the right information to the right audiences across the organization and across devices. Uh, SharePoint News uh, allows you to share any kind of update information that you need to distribute to your workforce. To create news, it's as easy as clicking new and choosing a page or a news post. 
At Ignite, we announced new page designs that allow me to begin my work with uh, some of the creativity already taken care of for me. Using a page design uh, is a shortcut to productivity, uh, and it allows my organization to enforce consistency uh, in look and feel and layout of news articles. Once I have chosen my template, I can start writing my article. So let's say I'm writing on uh, an upcoming quadcopter safety program. It's as easy as just point, click, and type. Um, I can edit and modify web parts. And within just a few minutes, I can have a rich, finished article um, that allows me to include not only text and images, but uh, information about upcoming events, links, links to experts, uh, rich images. Uh, and with all of that, I've, uh, I've got the ability to tell a very rich, compelling story. We also announced the ability to filter and target news articles. So for example, I can specify that this is a featured article, and this piece of metadata can then be used to show this article in appropriate places across my internet. And I can now target this article to specific audiences by, uh, by targeting any Azure 365 group. So I might target this to the product launch um, uh, marketing event group, for example. So let's go ahead and type that. There we go. Um, and I can use any Azure, uh, Azure group to target articles to, and that includes dynamic groups. So as my, organizations change, uh, as my organization changes, the right news comes up and appears to the right people. Now, throughout my internet, news will surface anywhere there's a news web part. And news web parts can then use this filtering and targeting to create rich news experiences. What you're seeing here is a site specifically meant to host the news for an organization. It was built as a SharePoint communication site uh, in just minutes with out-of-box web parts. And in fact, there are several news web parts here using different filters and layouts to create an engaging experience with company news. Now, um, not all news uh, is something that's created internally. Sometimes news comes from outside the organization, and you want to share that as well. For example, there's an article here on the uh, European SharePoint Conference blog about, um, uh, it looks like we're having some video. Let me see if I can help with that. All right. Um, uh, give me one second. We've got some cable shifts here from this morning. All right. Um, so there's a great article here on the European SharePoint Conference blog. I want to share that with other people in my organization. So I'm just going to copy the URL to that and use a new feature in SharePoint News, which is creating news links. News links let you share any URL. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in that URL. SharePoint automatically gets the, image, uh, the preview image and summary and title from that article. I can adjust those if I need to and click Post, and that becomes a news article distributed throughout my organization as well. Now, SharePoint News uh, creates a single feed of news, uh, and we see that at, on SharePoint Home and on the SharePoint mobile application. So let's take a quick switch over to the mobile app. And here in the beautiful new layout of the SharePoint mobile app, we're really focusing on helping you catch up with news, find what you need, and get back to work. So on the News tab here, you can see the news article we just published, Quadcopter Safety Program. And if I tap that, it opens up in a responsive, beautiful layout. I see all of the interactive elements that we had on that article, including the links to events uh, and uh, um, a stream video. And I can engage with that article right from my phone. I can li at the bottom of the screen, I can tap to like the article. I can add some comments. And I can even at mention someone. I think my uh, colleague Alex did a great job here with this article. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a shout out. And he'll uh, get a notification uh, of that comment uh, that I added. At the very top of the screen, you'll notice there's also an ability for me to bookmark or save this article for later so that I can come back and read it later if I don't have time to fully engage with that right now. And those articles that I've saved for later, I can find on the Me tab of the mobile application. And shipping very soon here, we'll be able to see those on the uh, SharePoint homepage as well. Let me refresh and see if that's uh, showing quite quickly enough here. So you can notice here on the, on the left navigation, those articles I've saved for later are available now in SharePoint Home as well. So SharePoint News is a great way to tell rich, compelling stories, pulling content in from across Office 365, and to distribute those stories to the right audiences across devices. 
Now let's turn our attention to another way to really engage people in an organization, and that's with Yammer. Yammer is how people connect and engage across the organization, across teams, breaking down silos to share knowledge and experiences. One of the hero experiences for Yammer is allowing people to engage with leadership at an organization. This is something that was a key part of how we drove our digital transformation at scale at Microsoft. What you're seeing here is an example of a leadership engagement group in Yammer, where anyone can come, engage with leaders, ask questions, express concerns. It drives this culture of transparency and openness that is truly transformative. Also transformative is the ability to spark conversation and move the needle forward faster with live events. Live events is a capability we introduced this summer in preview, and it's available to all of you today in Office 365. So if I uh, go uh, to the right rail, you'll notice there's a link to a past event. I'll go ahead and open that up. And we have an event experience in Yammer that brings in stream to support the live and on-demand recording of the meeting itself. So I can see the uh, event live or on-demand. I can see the conversation that was carried on during the event, and the video follows me, which is particularly helpful while watching the event in real time. And people can even express themselves in their own language. This first reply is actually in Danish. I don't speak Danish, but luckily Yammer does, so I can click translate and get the English equivalent. That's a very inclusive way to give everyone a voice across the organization. Now, the recordings of the live events become important permanent assets over time. They're, they're full of content that can be really useful to the organization, not just at the moment of the event. And one of the things that's great about Stream and its incorporation in live events is that it unlocks the content of that video with AI. So I can, for example, search to find exactly the answer to a question that was posed below about um, whether uh, our new drones are waterproof. So I'm going to go ahead and search for waterproof, and sure enough, I can find exactly uh, the place where that was discussed, jump to that part in the video, and the if I don't want uh, to uh, disturb my neighbors, I can even turn on closed captions. So live events uh, in Office 365 are available to you today. I really encourage you to give these a try. They're in preview, and they'll be releasing to general availability um, in the next couple of uh, weeks and months here. Now let's turn our attention back to uh, SharePoint and how we can use communication sites in SharePoint to share vision, knowledge, resources, and services across the organization. This first example takes what we were just looking at as a scenario of engaging with leaders and brings it to the internet with what I would call an executive leadership site. In, on this site, the leadership can share their perspectives, they can share news when what's top of mind. So we see a beautiful set of links to resources. The leadership uh, team is sharing their perspectives using the exact same SharePoint News technology we just looked at. So this is just another use of SharePoint News to create a, a type of blog. Um, we can uh, see links to important resources, and we can engage with the leadership right here in SharePoint. On the right side of the screen is the conversation, the same conversation that we were just seeing in Yammer brought into a curated experience in SharePoint with the new Yammer Conversations web part. The new Yammer Conversations web part gives you a fully interactive, engaging experience with Yammer right inside of SharePoint. It's the modern replacement for Yammer Embed, and I'm really pleased to announce that we're beginning shipping of the Yammer Conversations web part this week. So some of you in, in targeted release will start seeing th that this week, so I'm very excited about that. Um, moving down the site, we also see that we have embedded the recording of the most recent monthly Q&A event. So we're bringing Stream in to, again, create a curated experience with leadership, and in fact, there's a channel of all of the past events. So this is a communication site being used to share vision. We can also use communication sites to share knowledge. This, in this particular site, retail employees can come together and share best practices and access information about how to sell our products. So this is a true community bringing content and conversation together. We see some key resources and information at the top. Along the left, I can identify and learn more about community experts. I then have a list of targeted resources that are appropriate for me based on my role and my needs, uh, powered intelligently by Microsoft Graph. Um, and again, we have a conversation where we can connect uh, directly with experts, ask questions, get answers, share knowledge and best practices, again, using the new Yammer Conversations web part. 
Now, these kinds of sites uh, that share knowledge can be used by organizational departments as well to share information, to share services. And so in this example, we see a site that might be used by a human resources, by a personnel department. Um, and this is built with a SharePoint communication site as well, completely out of the box. Uh, and we can see that uh, the, the HR organization is sharing news, uh, sharing some updates, events, and training. Uh, links to important resources, and on the, on the right, there's even an app where I can request time off. This is a Power App hosted inside of the Power App's web part on this site. So we brought that functionality directly into this site. In addition, this site is a hub site. Uh, and you'll know, you can tell that by the top navigation uh, on, on this particular site. Hub sites allow you to associate other sites that are, uh, share a similar topic or, 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 or goal. So for example, this hub has a link to the giving campaign for charitable contributions. And hubs allow you to organize your internet and facilitate governance and branding and consistency, as well as make it easier to find resources across your organization. So we've seen how communication sites can be used to share vision, to share knowledge, to share resources and services in this example. Uh, but the internet is more than just a collection of individual efforts. The internet is about connecting those things, bringing them together. And organizations really strive and struggle to create a rich home experience for their internets, a place that brings news and search and content and conversation together into a compelling experience, something you might call a portal or an internet homepage. Let's take a look at how you can now build those kinds of experiences with SharePoint communication sites as well. What you're seeing here is an example of, a of the homepage for Contoso, and it's called Contoso Landings to reflect the company's uh, uh, brand and, and focus on drone technology. As we look down, this is a fairly typical internet landing page. We see news and events. We've got a new countdown web part. Uh, we've got links to great resources, clocks, financial status, and, we've, uh, and more. Um, and, uh, and, and this is a very typical type of internet portal. But one of the things that's been missing and customers asked us for was what we have up here at the top, what is called in the industry a mega menu. And we announced this at Ignite, and it's going to be shipping very, very soon, so you can add this type of global navigation to uh, any site in, in uh, SharePoint Online. Yes, I know that people are excited about that one. Um, now, we, uh, now, not every organization wants the same experience for their landing page. This one is very information dense. It's about news and information. But some organizations want their intranet landing pages to be more social and more engaging. So this particular example connects me immediately with important communities in my organization. It surfaces uh, information that's important to me, my team news, my frequent sites, my calendar, my documents, my recommendations. So this becomes more personal, more, uh, more actionable for me with the way that this particular um, design was put together. And then there's links to communities and events across the organization. And we even have brought in the company conversation from Yammer, again with that Yammer conversation web part. Now, there's also organizations that want to use their internet landing page to really drive a sense of brand and identity, and organizations want to just have a great-looking web experience. So we also challenged our design team to come up with a third design that shows how beautiful the web can be. And this is what they came up with. We have a great-looking home page uh, with low information density, great visual images. We've got a great moving image at the top of the page, uh, compelling large uh, graphics and text. Um, and, uh, and the information part comes a little bit lower in this particular uh, internet landing page example. Um, and we even have, uh, in this particular place, links to uh, mixed reality experiences with a 3D uh, file that we can manipulate in real time right on the page, and links to our mixed reality experiences in SharePoint spaces. So whether you're looking for information, for its social, or for something that really expresses the brand and priority of your organization, you can create those kinds of compelling landing experiences with SharePoint in Office 365. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. We can switch back to the slides. And so I, one of the things that Dan referred to at the tail end of his demo was 3D mixed reality in SharePoint spaces. And 
if you've not been following our announcements, and I know most people do have lives other than reading our blog posts, um, sometimes we forget that, but I did want to give an update on SharePoint Spaces. This is part of our approach to continue to be on the forefront of innovation in content collaboration with 3D and AI in particular. Uh, SharePoint, as you all know, is really continued to innovate, bringing together file collaboration and web content management in a single product. It's the only one in the industry that really does that. And we announced earlier this year that we're going to be taking to that to the next level, letting end users create 3D scenes with components built by developers, just like we have with 2D page layouts in a 3D mixed reality experience we call SharePoint Spaces. Uh, we'll be coming out with that next year, and you can see some of the concepts for the work we're doing. Uh, this is still early, and so we want to educate the market and get feedback at exploresharepointspaces.com. All right, to recap this section, really, there's three things we're focused on. One is helping you create engaging news articles to tell the stories across your organization. Two is to assemble those into these new communication sites that are mobile-ready, fast, easy to author on. And third is to make those sites not just static, but dynamic with video, with Microsoft Stream, and social conversations with Microsoft Yammer. And I've got a couple of URLs up here, but there's really, I want to stress, this aka.ms SharePoint lookbook. Uh, some of the things Dan showed very quickly, we had our design team create a lookbook. It's a term that fashion houses use to introduce their portfolios. And it's just gorgeous. Everybody go download this, check it out. We've got some printed versions we're giving out at the event. Put it on your coffee tables, show your friends. But most importantly, for the, those of you who've got corporate communications and HR and marketing folks who may have seen your SharePoint intranet on SharePoint 2010 and thinks that's the state of the art, I really want you to walk over to their office and sort of breeze them through it to see the kind of engaging experiences you can build with SharePoint with far less effort than ever before. All right, so that's the first of our four sections. Our next one is about flexible teamwork. This has really been the backbone of SharePoint adoption, is all sorts of different teams with all sorts of different needs uh, using a standard product across your organization. And we've, just like we did with communication sites, we've modernized that experiences with a unique approach in the industry for teamwork. I sort of call it the three Cs, where we bring together content collaboration in SharePoint, real-time communications from Microsoft Stream, uh, sorry, Microsoft Teams, and lastly, the ability to customize it with Power Apps and Flow and a host of partner tools. And to show our approach for flexible teamwork, uh, let me bring up and introduce Adam Harmitz. Adam. All right. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Switch over to the good old SharePoint document library. Great. So I'm excited to be here today, and I'm excited to show you all the latest innovations and delighters that help uh, teams collaborate on all types of content and however they want to. Like I said, I'll start in a SharePoint document library. Here we are in the modern user experience. If you haven't checked out modern lately, uh, you absolutely need to. We've maintained the simplicity that it's always had, but we keep adding more and more power to it. It's incredibly full-featured at this point. Uh, here I have a library where, of course, as a great information architect, I've added metadata to keep myself organized. Um, and you can sort, you can filter. I can even select a couple items and bulk edit metadata super easily right here. And we've just keep continuing to add little delighters that we've gotten feedback on. Like, for instance, right now, if I want to focus on target delivery and not owner, I can do a simple thing like drag and drop a column and just automatically it'll go into a different place. So customizing views are incredibly simple in WYSIWYG. Thank you. I'll take the applause. One other thing that we've added is we call column formatting. So super simple. You go to, for instance, if I want to highlight the documents that are ready for customers, go to column settings, format this column, and just click a button, and all of a sudden it's coded green or red, depending on the yes or no choice column. Cool. You can do this for date fields as well, where you can say, hey, there's a date coming. It's either green or yellow or red, depending on things that you uh, specify. It's super easy to use, um, and I'd suggest you check it out. 
Uh, another thing, too, you might have noticed, we've added a new column type in SharePoint. Been a while since we've done that. It is a location column. Right here, I have an example, Pilot Store. Uh, so you can see I can hover over it, and it comes up with a nice map from Bing. Uh, entering that data is easy, too. We also use Bing for address resolution. So for instance, if I go in here, where is it? Right here, and want to enter a new piece of metadata, I can just type Second Avenue. Seattle, and it comes up with a bunch of uh, interesting things on Second Avenue in Seattle. So it's super easy to be able to start working with, with metadata, including new types of columns, such as the location field. Now, I mentioned target delivery before. So this is a date column, and it's an important date column in the list. And so uh, the library's smart enough to know about that, so it automatically suggests things to me like, hey, let's set a reminder on this target delivery date. And just like that, I'm automatically using Microsoft Flow, our process orchestration engine, without even realizing it. And that's really been our focus with process orchestration over the past couple uh, quarters. Things like uh, page scheduling, or approvals, or review, or in this case, setting a reminder, automatically deeply embedding it into the product so you can just get going with those scenarios in just a couple clicks. Of course, like, like we had for a past while, the entire Microsoft Flow orchestration engine is embedded in SharePoint. So you can not only do these simple things, but it can grow into any business process that you can imagine. So that's for a document library. Let's go and check what the document library is within, namely a SharePoint team site. So if I go to the home page of the team site, you'll notice that we've added a bunch of new layouts and web parts, really to make the SharePoint team site home page a dashboard for your organization by bringing in multiple pieces of data and resources together. Definitely inspired and, of course, using the same features and technology that Dan just showed for, for more communication sites and intranets. For instance, this quick click web part right here, bringing uh, important things for my team. An activity stream of what's going on on my site. You'll also see uh, interesting activity going on in the group uh, and Outlook related to this. Of course, a good documents web part. So documents are front and center on the home page. And for instance, right here, extra sites. I glossed over it, but at the top, you also see a news web part. This is the same news that Dan showed for corporate communications teams, but it's designed a little to be more for your team status, your team vision, a blog for your team, essentially. But it goes into the same news distribution system that corporate communication teams use. So you can get the same visibility on your team status as official corporate comms can, and end users can see it all in one place. So it's a powerful win-win when you embrace the internet, both for communication sites as well as for collaboration and teamwork. So we've talked about libraries, we've talked about pages and sites. Let's go ahead and take a look at SharePoint lists. So here's a retail accounts list. Uh, and probably one of the most important things to understand is everything I just demoed for document libraries pretty much applies for lists as well. So we have a location column here. I can sort and filter and bulk edit. Um, and of course, I can connect a Power App to replace the out-of-the-box list view, um, so I can have my custom, uh, my custom forms within the SharePoint list. But one thing I want to show here is what we call row, row formatting. We just talked about it for the first time a couple months ago at Ignite. So this data is nice. I can see this data, but it doesn't really pop. It doesn't, you don't really show what's the most important data in my tabular view. Are things late? Are things on time? And so right here, I've created uh, ahead of time a custom row formatting for this list. And just like that, you can see the important data is highlighted. We've embedded a big map. And the real important thing to take away here is you don't need to be a professional developer to do something like this. If you have a SharePoint list in Modern, there's awesome examples on our Patterns and Practices website. You just, you know, it's JSON script, so it's nothing. Um, it's approachable for, for an end user to be able to take this and really be able to do this. I really call to action, take a look at your, the data you're storing in list today, and see if you can give it a visual refresh with row formatting. Well, so that's a quick tour through what's new and latest in team sites. Switching gears just a little bit, I want to talk about Microsoft Teams, the hub for teamwork. We've worked really hard to make sure uh, the best of SharePoint is embedded within Teams, so that those that want to work within Microsoft Teams don't need to leave the Teams shell. And also, if you're browsing around your internet and you stumble across something that would be better um, or you know, a conversation related to what you're working on, we can deep link you right into that. So I'll show you that in a couple different places. Uh, back on the home page of the team site, you'll see we've automatically embedded Teams. As a, you know, this is connected to Teams, so you see the Teams link right there. If I go to Documents and I go to a folder that's associated with the channel in Teams, you'll see I'll get a little notification right here that can immediately have me jump to Teams for that. But the really exciting thing really is if I'm in Teams to see the full power of SharePoint coming through. That's really how this becomes a real hub for teamwork. So right here in the general channel, I've configured this such that all SharePoint news posts, the ones you just saw on the home page, appear in the Conversations tab. Um, and then on the Files tab here, 
uh, you'll see this is actually the same view that you were looking at within SharePoint. So things like metadata, column formatting, uh, different types of views, the ability to sync or share with a, a company shareable link, it all comes through within Microsoft Teams as well. And then as you'd expect, pages or you know, lists that we were looking at, the full fun functionality comes through. So for instance, I could go back and take a look at that, uh, you know, the new row formatting view of the list that I was just looking at before. So, you know, to get a little technical for a second, you can almost think about this as a mini copy of the SharePoint front end running in Microsoft Teams. So for those that really embrace Teams as a hub for teamwork, there's no need to leave the Teams shell. Um, so hopefully by this point I've convinced you for your next project to use uh, a modern, the modern UX in SharePoint, connect it to a team, and use that to collaborate with your team. But you're probably sitting there and you're thinking, say, hey, Adam, that's great, but I have a bunch of existing content. It might be on-prem, it might be a classic SharePoint site in the cloud. What are you doing for that? And, and that's absolutely true. We know that, and we actually take it to heart on the engineering team. We think a lot about how to help you and be a partner on your digital transformation, including taking your existing content along. So let me show you a couple things that we've done for that. First, right here, I will show you a SharePoint 2013 site. And sure, this is in some ways a very typical site, um, but it also has some customizations to it. It has a, um, you know, documents, but it has a custom nav. Uh, it has a, a logo. It has subsites. And thanks to improvements that we've made in the SharePoint migration tool over the past year, all of those types of functionality in a site can come along with it. So here I have the SharePoint migration tool right here. Um, super simple to install. I log in with both my cloud and on-prem credentials. I've copy-pasted in this site right here. I get a choice whether to include all subsites. And then I can choose to migrate all of it or just select particular lists or document libraries within the site. I hit Next, and within minutes, this content is in the cloud. This freely available SharePoint migration tool really makes it easy to move your on-premise content to the cloud. And these improvements over the past year really help things like, for instance, when I come here, you can see the logo, the subsites, uh, and the navigation all came along with it. Um, it's cool already. It's already sort of being modernized because I have a uh, modern home page right here. The modern UX will automatically be applied to the document library, but I can go further. I can actually either script this or if I want to empower the end user, I can go to settings and connect to a new Office 365 group. And that's really the next step on your digital transformation once you've migrated content to the cloud. It's connected to an Office 365 group. You'll see a wizard that lets you get started. Incredibly easy to be able to do that. Um, and then once that's done, we'll also prompt you to add a team. So we sometimes in the office call this Groupify and then Teamify. Um, and it's really just a great way of helping you along and having your existing content come along. And by the end of the journey, you have, a, you have your existing content in, connected to an Office 65 group, so it has a uh, common identity. And then it's, of course, within Microsoft Teams if you Teamify it. One last thing I want to do to show you in terms of helping you on your digital transformation journey is show you the preview for the new SharePoint Admin Center. It is in preview in your tenant today. You can take a look at it. Um, you can see right here the home page of the new tenant admin for SharePoint allows you to uh, take a look at various stats and events and going on. But where we really invested a lot of time is in the new Sites tab right here. So, this shows you all the sites in the tenant, both the modern and classic, comm site, group connected, team sites, et cetera. It's all here, all in one place, easily filtable, so you can empower your employees on that digital transformation journey. Uh, in fact, it's even hub aware. So you know, after you've teamified and you groupified, you can also hubify um, right from here. Uh, so for instance, here's a, I'm going to filter just down to the sales sites, and you can see the hub site right there. You could select a new one and make it a hub site, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can add particular columns here, too. Like uh, One thing that I love to demo and show is external sharing right here. So if you hit Apply, you can very quickly and easily see which sites have external sharing enabled. Just the, the ability, this data was, of course, all available before. But with a new, fresh UX, it's really just easy to pull out these insights and for you to feel in control of your digital transformation journey. So that is an incredibly fast and quick tour of what the latest in collaboration. I hope you uh, get adopting modern, give us feedback, start teamifying, groupifying, and hubifying. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Adam. That was about as compressed as we could get that section. The full version went on a lot longer. So just to summarize, and, uh, first is Use SharePoint and Teams together, content and communications. There's no or. Content and communications make up teamwork, and that's what we've got in a flexible teamwork solution. Second, 
Uh, as Adam showed and Dan before, there's a lot you can do out of the box without any code or any customization. But if you do need to build custom forms and business processes, you can get started with Power Apps and Flow right from within inside the SharePoint experience. And third, uh, you don't have to leave your existing sites behind. You can migrate them as is to the cloud, or you can enhance those uh, by connecting them to teams and uh, hubs and so forth to making uh, a much more modern experience for your existing sites that users are familiar with. So next section coming up is around file collaboration. Just so we're clear where we're on the journey, we've talked about the top level internet, then we talked about teams, and now we're on files. And before we go into the demos, I did want to set some context about what we're trying to do with this experiences overall for Microsoft 365. Uh, because again, one of the things we've heard from all of you is thank you for all the capabilities you're bringing us to us in the cloud. You know, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, Yammer, Stream, et cetera, et cetera. But please make this power and flexibility you're giving us more simple and more consistent for our users. So I'll talk about three things we're doing there. First is we've adopted a common design language across platforms and applications that we're calling Fluent. And you can see in this picture the upcoming Outlook Web and OneDrive UI recast in this Fluent design language. And you'll be able to see that in preview uh, fairly soon, if not today. Second is we're building a set of shared components that are service delivered that show up in all the apps. It used to be when you'd go to the Microsoft apps and look at a list of files, it would be a different UI because different teams built it. Uh, and what we're doing is componentizing that, in particular for the context of this talk, around sharing and files and lists and libraries. As uh, Adam briefly showed, we can project that common experience inside Outlook, inside Microsoft Teams. So when we innovate, say, by adding a new workflow with Flow, it shows up on every platform and every endpoint. And the third thing we're doing, sort of uh, common design language componentization, the third thing we're doing sort of relates to OneDrive. Where OneDrive, we're making the application for where anywhere access to all your files. We know people like SharePoint and the flexibility of that, but people have said, hey, I just want to browse the tree of folders and work with files in the most streamlined way possible. And so I'm really excited about the progress we're making there. Uh, with OneDrive delivering any access to all your files. And to show that and more, let's introduce Omar Shaheen. Omar. Thank you, Jeff. Um, OneDrive provides a simple way to access all of your files in Office 365, your personal files as well as the shared files you're working on. Jeff mentioned that we're bringing the Microsoft Fluent Design Language to OneDrive, which you can see here. Uh, we actually have to switch to my computer first. As you can see here, which will really enhance the overall experience and bring a level of consistency. But we're adding a lot of powerful capabilities to OneDrive as well. You saw Adam earlier customize a document library with metadata and custom formatting. We want to make it possible for you to see that full set of information when you're browsing files in OneDrive. And you can see here, I'm looking at a document library which shows custom metadata, custom columns, as well as custom formatting. So I can access all my files in OneDrive with the confidence knowing that all the features and capabilities are expressed fully. We're also adding intelligent capabilities to OneDrive. You can see here at the top the recommended list. The recommended list is an intelligent list powered by the Microsoft Graph. It uses information about who I collaborate with, as well as recent collaboration activity, such as comments, at mentions, and edits. It tries to anticipate the files I'm going to access next. So if I start my day in OneDrive or come back later on, I can see all the information here about who's working on what, making it really simple for me to access that content. Over the past couple of years, we've also added support for over 320 different file type previews to OneDrive. Whether you're in OneDrive or SharePoint or Teams, you can now see these rich document previews for many different types of files. In this case here, I'm going to go ahead and open up this 3D rendered image, which OneDrive shows me. I can manipulate it. But one of the powerful capabilities we're adding is this notion of commenting on any file type. So you can see here my colleague, Alex, commented on this uh, 3D drone. And I can go ahead and comment back, say thanks. 
That'll actually send Alex a notification in his inbox letting him know that I commented on that file, making it much simpler for me to collaborate on any kind of file across OneDrive and SharePoint. Now, we've also added a number of great sharing features over the last couple of years, but we continue to um, address customer requests, making it even easier to share with people outside your organization. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit share and show two new features. The first is the ability to block download. So when I share externally with a link, I can prevent people from downloading that file. And the second is the ability to add a simple password, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. So when I go ahead and copy this link, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. You're going to see that I'm getting prompted for my password. I'm going to enter it. And now it's going to load Word, and you're going to see at the top of Word, it says you don't have permission to download or print this file. Not only that, I don't have the ability to copy text out of this file. It's just another great way for you to share externally, in addition to all the other features we have, to simplify the ability for you to get links out there and people to collaborate with, um, with ease. Now let's go ahead and open up this PowerPoint deck that one of my colleagues has been working on. This is going to open up with a new PowerPoint online viewer, and you saw how fast that was. We've also introduced this new simplified ribbon, really focusing on the content. And over here on the right, you're going to see changes while I was away. PowerPoint, Word, and Excel now inform you of collaboration activity since the last time you viewed a file, making it easy for you to catch up on what's changed. And you can see over here on the left some highlighted changes. This slide, for example, was changed, as well as this slide. So it makes it really simple for me to catch up. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring one of my colleagues into this session. So I'm going to go ahead and type at. And I just have to type one character, and you can see this intelligent people picker already knows who I work with and suggests that I want to collaborate with Lydia. And I'm going to ask her to update this. Now, Lydia doesn't have access to this document. And so with one simple gesture by at mentioning her, I'm actually asked if I want to share and notify her all at once. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now, if Lydia has a PowerPoint on her phone or Outlook running, she'll be notified. And then she can easily come into the document and act on that simple at mention, getting right back into the session and giving me a simple way to sort of stay on top of all the collaboration activity. Now, this deck is pretty far along. Let's take out a deck that maybe isn't as far along. Many of my decks start off like this. They're just simple slides with a bunch of, white tech, with a bunch of black text and white backgrounds. And I haven't really focused on the content. I'm going to show you how PowerPoint and some of the intelligent capabilities in Office help me make this look great. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Ideas button. And you can see here over on the right, there's a couple suggestions for me. The first is to add an image. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And now once I've done that, uh, it's just placed it on the page. It's given me a bunch of suggestions for different layouts that I might take. And so I think I like this one down here the best. And that's such a simple way for me to make this first slide look great without the need of a professional designer or anybody who's more capable than I am of making this deck. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second slide. And now this is one of my favorite features of designer, which is I'm going to go ahead and pick this choice here. And you can see that we chose a bunch of icons. Now, those icons were chosen based on the content and words found in the bullet points. I can go ahead and, of course, change these using one of the many icons that we support. But this is such a huge time saver without me having to look around and customize. I get to spend more time actually making my deck. Finally, on this last slide, you can see here another suggestion type, which I love, is the timeline view. PowerPoint already determined that I'm using dates in this slide and the bullets that I had earlier and created this beautiful timeline for me. These things take lots of time to create. And so this is a huge time saver and really, really something that I appreciate a lot. So now all, this all these demos were on the web. I'm going to switch over and show you some great ways we make file access even better on both Windows and Mac, in this case, demoing on the Mac. How many of you use Mac in the audience? All right, a pretty fair number. Um, last year, we announced Files on Demand for Windows. It's been one of our most popular features. And we were happy to announce at Ignite that we're bringing Files on Demand to Mac OS X Mojave. Files on, Thank you. Files on Demand provides a number of key features for both Mac and Windows, number one of which is files don't take up any space on disk. And that's really important because devices these days have smaller and smaller hard drives. In this case here, you're looking at a team site document library. 
This document library contains 4.1 terabytes of content in the cloud. There is no way I could possibly fit that on any computer I can buy today. And so what's great about this is I can browse all the files in this document library. You can see them all here without having to actually download and sync them on this computer. Now, if I want to take a file on the, offline on the computer, such as on a flight, I can go ahead and right-click on a file and just say, always keep on this device. When I do that, you'll see this green check mark here, giving me the confidence of knowing that this file will always be available, taking up space on this device. The files with the cloud icons, those aren't taking up any space, but I can browse. And then I can sort of change state over time and make, make things available or not. The last feature, or the last two features of Files on Demand are one, we now provide these previews that I showed earlier in the Finder and in Windows File Explorer. So I can go ahead and see all the different file types in my OneDrive, such as Adobe files. And I can also right click and share any file using the common sharing experience that you saw earlier, making it possible for me to collaborate directly in the file system. We think this will really be a huge time saver and great for lots of our customers. All right, now I'm going to switch over uh, to my phone and demo a couple of quick features. Now, we know many of you also use Outlook to send and receive email pretty much all day long in my case. And so a great feature we've recently added and are shipping this year in Outlook is the ability to browse and attach files from anywhere in your organization. As you can see here, I brought up this new attachment picker. I'll do that again if that was a little fast. But I click on the little paper clip. I say attach file. The first list you're seeing is a list of all my recent files. And so with one click, I can just tap the file I'm working on. But I also have the ability to browse all the files in my OneDrive. And I have the ability to browse all the files in all of the places I work with my teams, whether it's Microsoft Teams, Office 365 Groups, or SharePoint Team Sites. Let's go and select to this file that I was just working on now. I'll say I want to insert a link. Outlook will now get a sharing link that will uh, 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 be governed by my company policies and insert that in the email right there, making it super easy for me to send around that link so that other people can collaborate in real time on that content as well. And then I also quickly want to show uh, in the SharePoint app, uh, we also added the ability to browse the contents of document libraries, one of our top customer requests. So now when I go into a document library in any team site, you'll see that same list of common files and the ability to search across that content, providing all that capability directly in the SharePoint mobile application. Now, many of you might want to know how you can take advantage of all these features. And the real thing that you should be thinking about is how you're going to deploy OneDrive in your organizations. And we're making that a lot simpler with a new feature called um, known, folder known Folder Move. There are a number of ways to configure it. You can automatically configure it for all the devices in your organization. But you can also provide your end users the ability to opt in. In this case, you can see here on the screen in the OneDrive uh, system tray, there's a little button that says Protect These Folders. This device is not configured to have all my files in OneDrive. But once I click that button, we bring up this dialog. It says, my IT department wants to protect all my important files and folders. In this case, you can see here I have 288 megabytes in my documents folder. I'll say start protection. And just like that, all that co local content in my documents folder, my pictures folder, and my desktop will be automatically migrated to OneDrive, writing me all of the amazing capabilities around real-time collaboration, file protection, backup, and sync. And so this is something you can do today on your Windows 7 devices and your Windows 10 devices and really start deploying OneDrive in your organizations. Thank you very much. Thanks, Omar. So one of the things that I, we get asked after the, going through the demos that we've done in these three sections around intranets, teamwork, and files is, that's great. I see the capabilities you're bringing to the cloud. But I'm not sure we'll be able to do it in our organization because of security. And we want to be clear that security is nothing you don't trade off by going to the cloud. You get better security and compliance by bringing your data into Office 365. And that sort of comes in three areas. First is the underlying platform. We have a set of operational procedures that we run in our data center and our operations team that we think are far in excess of the security approaches people are able to take with their on-prem data centers, networks, and so forth. Second is you get more capabilities as IT for security controls and to address compliance needs with things like DLP and e-discovery. And so I'm not going to go 
walk through all of these, but you can see these are some of the benefits you get by putting your data in the cloud. Uh, you get the benefit of our uh, footprint of data centers and our security approaches. You get new security capabilities like data classification and labeling, and you get greater compliance uh, controls. Things like automatic e-discovery is one that we're bringing out. And so with that, to recap this section, we would say both for end user benefits and security and compliance benefits, move your data to the Microsoft Cloud. We'll do a great job for you. Second is while we've got a lot of collaboration experiences where we bring together file management, chat, websites, et cetera, OneDrive is the most streamlined of those experiences to get quick access to all your files with these shared controls that uh, are consistent across the platform. And third is Omar showed a few different ways where OneDrive and Office work together. We have a traditional way of deploying Office in our Office 2019 product that's not updated by the cloud, but we would strongly recommend you get the cloud version, Office 365 Pro Plus, on PC, Mac, iOS, Android, uh, web, that continues to bring new cloud value for security collaboration and AI to your users uh, on a regular basis. And so uh, we'd strongly recommend that option over the traditional, aka perpetual option for Office. All right, next up is the last of the four sections around intelligent content. Uh, we're very excited about this. I think you'd have to not be paying attention to see all the AI innovation that's going on in the industry and inside Microsoft. So many things are possible that weren't possible technically five years ago. And we're excited about this because there's both benefits for end users and how AI can make them more productive, but also as you automate business processes, not just with traditional formal branching workflow, but using AI algorithms to augment human beings uh, with, these, with this uh, AI technology to do uh, work that is traditionally been manual in the past. And so I am very excited to show those AI and search capabilities to brought up under the stage Naomi Moneypenny, who's getting set up to show a bunch of different demos. Yes, woo! I'm excited. And so very excited <laughs> for our last set of demos to have Naomi take the wheel. Awesome, thank you so much, Jeff. And I am really pumped to be able to talk to you a little bit about Microsoft Search today. So uh, really excited to show you some of the newest capabilities that we have as part of this. The first thing hopefully you notice is here I am at the office.com start page. And you can see right up at the top here, we have a central search header. That search header is gonna be omnipresent across all of your search experiences that you have inside of Microsoft 365. So whether that's SharePoint, whether it's inside of the Office applications, both in the desktop versions as well as the online versions, and also in Windows and many other experiences that we're putting together as well. So I like to think about it as we're searchifying, right, I'm just gonna add that to our lexicon today. So you can see as soon as I type in here, as soon as I hit there, I'm getting personalization that's being fed by the Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft Graph allows me to see the applications that I have access to, and these are not just the Microsoft 365 applications I have access to. Anything inside of your organization that's using Azure Active Directory can also appear here. So it makes it really easy for users to get access to the capabilities they need. We think about kind of the way that we're supercharging the search box. We're allowing you to find things and to discover, but also to command and navigate as part of that. You can see the files that I have access to, you can see people and sites, and all of that personalization, as I mentioned, is being driven by the graph. The other piece that you saw a little bit with Omar's demo is this idea of recommendations. And these recommendations are based not just on the graph recommendations, but actually on the content that you're working with the most. So if a colleague has come back and updated something or has mentioned you in the comments to get your feedback after you've looked at something, I can see those recommendations directly in here as well. So I see all of that information. It gives me some tidbits on why that's actually being recommended to me and actually helps me to get on, on with my day. You'll also see that we have a discovery section in here, too, that allows me to find content that's relevant to me across the organization. This is really based, again, on that personalization that's being delivered across the Microsoft Graph and delivering it right inside of this office.com start experience. 
So if I go ahead and do a search in here, you can see uh, I can do something like marketing, and I'll see a bunch of results in here. I'll see those results for people, for sites, for content, all of those pieces really coming together. So in this case, that personalization again, being driven by the graph. Hopefully you're getting the message on that on this one. Uh, and so we see here you know, a live preview of that item. So in this case, I see a PowerPoint file, and I get that live preview for over 300 different file types as part of that. So here's my live preview. I can check out this PowerPoint document uh, and check out you know, the different slides inside of it right here inside of the browser. Now, I wanted to introduce you to some of the newer experiences that we have as part of Microsoft Search. So in this case, I'm logged in over here in Bing. And so I can go to bing.com. I can log in with my Office 365 credentials. So you'll see over here, I'm actually logged in with my work or school account as part of this. And I can do a search, that same search for my organizational data right here inside of, uh, of Bing. So you might notice that as soon as I type in the word marketing in this case, I actually get a recommended result. So this gray box that's up on the screen right now is actually being powered by your organizational results. So you have control over curating a link in here, curating even a Power App if you wanted to have directly have answers inside of this. And you can see all of the results across the organization as well as a curated bookmark. So this is a really cool functionality to be seeing bookmarks that my administrator has curated for my company. I see the groups that I'm a member of from Office 365. I see files and sites. And importantly, I see Yammer and Teams conversations all in the same search experience. Yes. <laughs> so. So we're always thrilled to have that as part of this. Now, this is just the, showing you the Microsoft Search in Bing experience. This is in public preview right now. So if your tenant is based in the UK, in France, in Germany, you can actually switch this on right now. And we're hoping to roll out to the rest of the world uh, very soon as well. And so we'll have this uh, available as soon as we can. <laughs> so the public preview is there for you to try today uh, and try it out for your organization. Now, this same search experience, whether it's people or content, we're really taking it into every single application. So even though you see it in just one place right now, we think about this going across everywhere as well. So uh, to show you a little bit about that, I'm going to go over to the SharePoint mobile app and do a little uh, checking out here on that experience and make sure I've got the wrong phone. Sorry. I have the wrong phone. There's too many phones on that. <laughs> so we have a plethora of devices here. So let's see. There we go. There we go. So uh, let me check out here. So in this case, I'm over in the SharePoint mobile app, which we have already certified. And so you'll see that as soon as I enter into that SharePoint mobile app, I get the version of SharePoint that actually has find as the, as the highlighted experience. So we think search is so important that it actually is the premier experience for how you interact on that SharePoint mobile app. So you'll see I've got quick access here, things that I've accessed inside my organization before. I've got frequent sites. I've got the people I've been working with, and then recent files. So really helping me to get the content that I need on the go. And then I can also check out things like popular searches and things that are useful inside of my organization. You have control, of course, of these featured links, things that you want to have go to all of your employees as part of this. And as soon as I t type into that search box, you can see that personalization is at work here as well. So you'll see that some of the, the searches that are in here are queries that I've done before. And then you'll see others that are trending queries inside of my organization. So really highlighting sort of getting that wisdom of crowds as part of this and understanding what's useful to you from a personalization perspective as well as what you want to do as an organization as well. So we have all of that great uh, feature set inside of there as part of the SharePoint mobile app. Now, that's real cool. You think, hey, that's awesome. All of that AI is inside of the Microsoft Graph. It's personalizing. It's doing all this cool stuff for me. So let's talk about how we can use this as part of a business process. So one of the things that I wanted to highlight to you is a new and different experience. So, and for that, I will need an Android phone to do that because, hey, we're very device agnostic here. <laughs> so, it's important. So, and it would help if I could use the device. So, there we go, OneDrive. All right, let me make sure I get the right connector. Here we go. There we go. So, all right, I'm going to show you a couple of different things here. So just to prove that we're on our Android device here, as you guys can see. So I'm going to check out the different sites here. And so I see the ones that we've been use recently using as part of this. And I can see a number of different areas here. Now, one of the things that I wanted to showcase to you is the ability to do image search. And so that ability to take content that isn't just text or document formatted, but we actually want to use this as part of uh, a display inside of a, a retail store. 
So this is kind of an example of how search is really getting built into all of your business processes and how you can actually use this inside of the organization. So in this case, I'm going to go to North America and I'm going to check out retail store displays. Now, what we want to do is make sure that when we have a retail store display, and we're rolling it out to all of the different stores, that we want it to look the same in every place. So how do we connect that to a business process and actually check that it can work as part of this? So you'll see that the scan button is in a very prominent location, and I can go ahead and scan. Uh, in this case, since I, I don't have a retail store display handy, I have a very handy picture instead <laughs> of a retail store display. So uh, just to make you hungry, uh, we have some great looking cakes here. And I'm going to snap that picture and turn it around the right way, because that's helpful when we're looking at it later. So I'm going to do that. And then I can fill in this custom metadata as part of this. So in this case, I could you know, say it's a display. You know, Obviously, you'd have a more creative name than that. Uh, and then I can actually say what kind of display it is. So I can set this as a primary display. So this metadata actually allows me to figure out what's the condition, how is this display being used, and then to be able to easily recall this later. So in this case, it's a primary display. It's not one that's by the register. Uh, and I can you know, put in some extra piece there. And you'll see even we have an option here for extracted text that's automatic coming from this image as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And there's going to be some background processing that's going on here to help me understand that context of that image. So again, we're looking for compliance in this display. We want that same you know, look and feel to come across uh, all of the different stores that we have in this organization. And so we're running a background process so that it's easy for that first line employee to be able to make sure that what they're actually putting together is working. So in this case, I can go over to Outlook, and I will see here that I actually got an email. Um, so you can check out here. There's an email here from a store display person, and it actually says, you know, here's that submitting of photo, uh, a display, JPEG, this one you just saw me type in, and it actually says that we're missing that feature. So it could actually look through the power of cognitive services and identify what was missing as part of that image. So it's really cool to be able to see how that in integration is happening inside of search, and then I can run that flow against it too. So let's have a look at how we actually did that behind the scenes. So I've submitted the image, it checked it out, it said, hey, it's not uh, part of what you need. So let me switch over to a different uh, account here and check out some of the new features that we need. So go over here. Here's my retail store displays, and let me type over here to number one so you guys can see. There we go. So I have a group of all of these images in here, all of the different displays as part of this. Uh, and you can check out all these different ones. And so I can check out you know, which of these displays actually has the featured item as part of it. I need to be able to see that. So I can go ahead and say, you know, in this case, not just tiles, but I can actually put in that list view. And you'll see we actually have a cupcake meter as part of this. And that cupcake meter is actually looking for the thing that we want as part of that display. And so because cognitive services didn't find it uh, in this particular image, you'll see that that cupcake meter is actually low. So there's a confidence score that's going on behind the scenes here to tell me whether those scans actually have the, what I was expecting as part of this or not. And so you can see that happening. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, can, I can take this image, I can actually do a search for what I'm looking for, I see that there's an item missing as part of this, I can flag that to my first line employee, and then I'm able to bring this back into uh, what I'm doing inside of my business flow. Now, how did we build that flow? Uh, this is one of the areas we wanted to talk, show you here from a customization perspective. So in this case, this is just Microsoft Flow calling to cognitive services to actually get that image information, analyze the image, extract what is needed from there, and then kick off that business process of sending an Outlook email. So it's a really cool way to be able to see all of those different areas. So in this case, you can see there's the fan. Here's what's happening behind the scenes and how it's sending that. And all of this is very easy to build as you need uh, for your, your particular business process. So that's enough on Microsoft Search and AI. Hopefully you've got some great ideas in terms of how you can use these capabilities inside of your business. And I will hand it back over to Jeff. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so to recap this section, first, find what you're looking for in Microsoft Search. As Naomi talked about, it's not just traditional inverted index word counting algorithms in Microsoft Search. We are using machine learning and AI to build a personalized model for every user in their organization based on signals of what's going on in the content, 
the communication graph in the organization so the user sees what's most relevant to them, not the average of what's most relevant across everybody in their organization. And as you saw, that Microsoft Search experience is going to power across all our applications, including SharePoint, of course. Second is using AI capabilities from Azure, cognitive services, Azure machine learning, to do things like sentiment analysis, image recognition, uh, to augment uh, human interaction with our applications with AI. And you can use that, as Naomi showed at the end, with Microsoft Flow, where you're using Flow to bring together, again, sort of sequential, process, logical-oriented automation with sort of more fuzzy, algorithmic, AI-based algorithms to build these sort of integrated, intelligent solutions uh, with Microsoft Flow. So that's the four uh, experience demos we've got for you. I will wrap up with just a couple of slides. First, I wanted to reinforce that while we're leading with the cloud, and many of the new capabilities like Teams and Power Apps and Flow and the Graph and Microsoft Search and, and so forth really only come in the cloud. We continue to be committed to our on-premises release. And so we're very excited a few weeks ago to have done the best release of SharePoint Server on-premises we've ever done. And so we're not able to take everything from the Microsoft Cloud and package it up. But some of the most important experiences that you all have asked us for, uh, we have included in that release. So the new modern sync client with files on demand, it works against SharePoint Server 2019. Uh, the team site capabilities that Adam showed you and the communication site experiences that Dan Holm showed you. While we don't have the connections to the groups and graph work, the core experiences that's dramatically faster and simpler, uh, we have brought to on-prem. And then lastly, since we know no two organizations' journey to the cloud is exactly the same, great hybrid support so that you can mix and match which sites and OneDrives are on-prem versus the cloud, and you can use capabilities like search and auditing in a sort of hybrid way with your content split across them. And so we've really tried to make a great uh, server on-prem release and include it as part of our journey to the cloud. And completing that journey, we wanted to highlight a few other things. First, as Adam showed in the teamwork demo, we have a first-party migration tool uh, that we've continued to enhance, and we'll get some major updates in the early part of the new year. And we'll continue and improve that free migration tool for file servers and on-prem SharePoint sites. Second, we have our Fast Track program that many of you have heard about that provides a set of onboarding programs and advice so that you can get deployed with Exchange and SharePoint and Teams and more in the cloud very quickly, benefiting from the work we've done with tens of thousands of organizations onboarding them to Office 365. And last and most importantly, uh, since we certainly don't meet the needs of all organizations for all scenarios out of the box, there are amazing partners in the SharePoint ecosystem that provide advanced migration and governance services and consulting and training and applications. Um, as Tracy talked about, 75 of them are sponsors here, and I really encourage you to go to the expo and meet with them uh, because they are very much a part of the transition process to the cloud. So with that, we will wrap up this morning's uh, keynote. I Really wanted to thank, again, everybody for your support and interest in Microsoft Technologies. We're very eager to hear and learn from you this week. Uh, there's a lot of great sessions, a lot of representatives from our team here. And I'll close with some, some of the key resources. Uh, but really, thank everybody. Have a great conference. And please stay in your seats or come back to your seats really quickly, because we'll immediately follow this session with a keynote on the work we're doing on the SharePoint platform and how it extends across Microsoft 365 and Azure as well. Thank you very much.